You know the yeah. odd thing, speaking of Republicans, you know, James Comer, who ran that committee, mm -hmm. uh, he apparently left the hearing early and did not ask a single question. Huh. How weird is that? It's very strange. He's been calling for him to come in. Hey, Hunt, we want Hunter Biden. He didn't ask him a single question. Well, Brian's going to ask questions to Mark Levin, mm -hmm. and he will answer them. That's coming up on the show. Steve Ducey's been on a tear lately, calling out the MAGA-motivated investigation into President Biden, where James Comer and Jim Jordan continue to look foolish. Now, you can tell that his Fox and friends, Ainsley Earhart and Brian Kilmeade, might be getting a little bit tired of these interjections of truth when they're just trying to do their job of spinning for Republicans. Uh, he apparently left the hearing early. It's very strange. He's been calling for him to come in. Hey, Hunt, we want Hunter Biden. He didn't ask him a single question. Well, Brian's going to ask questions to Mark Levin, mm -hmm. and he will answer them. That's coming up on the show. Listen here, Steve. We're trying to run this promo for Mark Levin. We don't need any factual interruptions about how Republicans in Congress have absolutely no intention of doing anything other than lie for Donald Trump. What's the matter with you? Now, by the way, Comer didn't ask any questions in the deposition that they desperately wanted, but he was back on TV where his lies are much more effective. But at the end of the day, we're going to try to hold this family accountable. We're going to try to have referrals. We're going to try to identify the people in the deep state that were part of the cover-up. Because remember, in addition to the Biden financial crimes, we also have the cover-up by the deep state actors. So we're trying to hold everyone accountable. We're trying to wrap this up. And I think that the, the deposition with Hunter Biden and the transcribed interview with Jim Biden were huge successes. This went from an airtight slam dunk case to we're going to try to hold the family accountable and we're going to try to identify people in the deep state. So since those goals can't be met, it's time for this clown show to prove Representative Crockett correct here. It's because y'all lie. That's just the bottom line. You have done it thus far in this investigation. You have done it this far as it relates to this committee. In every single hearing, y'all spin, spin, spin. I don't know how y'all are still standing right now because you should be quite dizzy from all the spinning that you're constantly doing. We know that Republicans could care less about facts. That is the reason that I said in the hearing in which we were going over whether or not they were going to find Hunter in contempt. I said the reason he would not want to testify behind closed doors is because all they do is lie. And I can tell you there is some lie that they are working on spinning. So I think when the transcript mm. comes out, it's going to read it's going to read well for him because they did a great job prepping for a read. But that's oh, but, interesting. but the reality is. Yeah. Yeah. But when it, when you get down to it and you start parsing the words, you start realizing, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Well, They've reached the point of openly admitting that their closed door testimony didn't bear any evidence. B but wait until we spin it on TV to create this false reality for some voters. It's Republicans favorite part of the process. Now, the 200 plus page document about the seven hour deposition that Hunter did, it contains all sorts of interesting nuggets and juicy gems. First, Hunter admitted that he put his dad, Joe, on speakerphone with his business associates, and then that he invited him to drop by his business lunches. And remember, this is international business. But he's adamant that his dad was never involved in his business dealings. Try to figure that out. He, he had a, a, another convenient, you know, bout of amnesia or confusion about things that I can't imagine most people who are sentient, and I don't think he was always on drugs, was he? Um, would have a decent recollection of. Yeah, either he had amnesia. My other favorite line, Laura, from what I've read in the deposition so far, is about asked about certain text messages that are hugely incriminating. He says, oh, I, I was high at the time or maybe drunk. So he has amnesia, he's drunk, he's high, and apparently he just can't go anywhere without daddy. But that's normal for a 40-something-year-old grown man. I mean, that's what we're to believe. This is ridiculous. He's trying to play us for fools. Everybody knows. There is no doubt by anybody with two eyes and two ears that Hunter Biden was selling access to uh, President Biden and at that time Vice President Biden. The only question is, is continue. If you think a family as close as this family was, this is the one place where they build absolute firewalls. And that just simply belies the truth. Without embarrassment, Josh Hawley's legal analysis was, come on, he was drunk and high. Everybody knows this is what happened but still no sign of evidence that proves the devastating case of international money laundering that they've been chasing for over a year. So Laura Ingram tried to act like confirmation of their accusations isn't even a normal thing anymore. Senator, this is all they have, as if we're expecting a check to be written out by Hunter to Joe or by a Chinese energy company to the former vice president saying, 
in the notation line saying, thanks for the help through via Hunter. You know, it's just, that's not how these things work. But of course, that's all they really have. These Democrats are ridiculous. They expect us to show proof of the president enriching himself and his family off of the back of his son's position at a Chinese energy company. They want us to show it. By the way, though, this is another playground trick that MAGA Republicans play when they hit dead ends in their blatant lies. Just claim that what you repeatedly promised to produce that would nail Joe Biden on his criminal activity is some kind of impossible feat that your target expects you to come up with, as if it's not normal. They're spinning, but their desperate appearances are losing some buddies that originally believed that this was much more than just political theater. The question the mainstream media keep asking is, where's the proof that Joe Biden got a dime? Yeah, and that's going to be the difficult part for Republicans. And, and I got to say, as somebody who does believe there's plenty of evidence here, I think that this has failed optically for Republicans, and they've done good work. Obviously, Jim Jordan, Comer have done great work on this, but optically, it does make it seem as though they're beating up on someone with addiction issues. That's exactly what the media wanted it to look like. That's how they framed it, and unfortunately, that's what's coming to fruition. So I would encourage Republicans, I know you want to get to the bottom of this, but let's focus on the election. Let's focus on the failed policies of Joe Biden, this impeachment inquiry, unfortunately, is falling flat with a lot of viewers and voters. Congressman, do you think maybe the American public is getting a little tired of this because they can't, fa they can't understand it, it's complicated, they don't know all the names and places and faces, and you haven't proved the basic point yet that President Biden was directly involved? Is the public getting tired of it? Well, large-scale international money fraud schemes are, 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 by their very nature, complicated. But I think the American public is tired of a two-tier justice system and somebody being treated completely different, particularly when they see what's going on with President Trump at this point in time. Some of these pundits appear to be tired of this embarrassing expedition, maybe because they heard the nonsense and carried it for so long that it's gotten boring. They need the next fake scandal to take some attention off of Trump's crimes that actually have evidence behind them. But elected Republicans' job of convincing voters on their false reality, just, that hasn't changed at all, though. They need a public hearing now to extend the show for as long as possible. The memo's definitely been sent. Both sides have been spinning this, obviously, and if this other televised hearing comes about, I can just imagine the ratings. So, hey, I'd love to see this guy under oath in front of the committee in public. That needs to be the next step here. Let's let the whole nation see the truth which looks to be that Joe Biden is a crook. The truth is, is that we know he's been paid by foreign companies. He's confirmed that he offered his father up to foreign investors at these meetings, that his dad was on the phone, his dad went to the lunches, the whole family's gotten rich. And now it looks like just exactly what it is. It looks like a bribery scheme, a quid pro quo scheme, selling influence involving the president of the United States. Laura, this is serious, serious stuff. And uh, I, I just hope the house keeps pressing and that they put Hunter under oath in public and make him testify. I mean, we should, I think we have, I, I think the public hearing is the next step. I think we need to continue where we're at. Uh, we have a two vote majority. We don't, I mean, until we get anything passed, uh, we don't necessarily have the votes for anything, but, but I think this investigation is worthy and I think this investigation is worthy of being shown to the public. What, it doesn't get much more obvious than that. So with no evidence and a couple few pictures of Hunter's penis in hand, the lead investigators went to the ranking system to really show how serious this whole thing is. Exit question, on a scale of one to 10, how damaging was today's testimony or deposition to Hunter Biden? Jason Smith, you go first. One to 10, 10 being the worst. Well, I would say that um, they're pretty good at not recalling many things, so I would say an eight. Okay, James Comer. I'll tell you an eight. Okay, Jim Jordan. Yes, yeah, Sean. Sean, I think it was very good for us. As I said, I think we got a lot of information that we can use if, in fact, we have a public hearing.